Right, let's try this again. We just recorded 20 minutes of this crap. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again. Yay. So if we sound a bit jaded, <laughs> that might be because of that. It might be because we watched Samurai Carp. That's, that's why we're jaded. Are you going to keep calling it Samurai Carp? <laughs> did I just call it Samurai Carp, did I? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. This movie doesn't deserve my, my attention. <laughs> Hello and welcome to I Hate Your Movie. My name is Dan. My name is Rick. And this is a podcast where we inflict, where we inflict, where we inflict me. <laughs> the tape got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> CD skipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where we inflict movies upon each other for entertainment. You know, as I said at the last episode, I like lots of different kinds of films. Mm -hmm. And I think we pretty much went through all the major genres and things that I like, except one, which is the famous, the infamous uh, <laughs> B-movie. So we watched Samurai Cop by Amir Shervan, starring Matt Hannon or Ma Matthew Kuradas. Yep. Well mumbled. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. No. Yeah. Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop. And it is a movie made in 91 by Iranian filmmaker, if you want to use that word, mm -hmm. who emigrated to the United States, watched Lethal Weapon once, and didn't remember it very well, and remade it. And thus we get Samurai Cop. So I'm always curious, because you always talk about filmmakers that aim to make a good film, and it turns out badly, and filmmakers that aim to make a bad film for comedic purposes. For me, they're all bad. Like, where does this where does this fall into your categories? This is the genuinely try to make a good film. You think? Yeah. I still disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Even after discussing this. He, like a lot of bad filmmakers, and which is also what I can identify with, is that a lot of bad filmmakers only see the big picture. So, like in Edward, where... He, Thor Johnson knocks over a gravestone, can see it's plastic or whatever, and people are like, oh, he knocked over a gravestone. This is a shit movie. And Edward says, well, it's all about the big picture. Filmmaking is not about the tiny details. It's about the big picture. The big picture? Yes. Then how about when the policeman arrived in daylight, but now it's suddenly night? What do you know? Haven't you heard of suspension of disbelief? And this is how a lot of bad movie directors think, is that it doesn't matter all these little details. I don't have money for it, but so I'm not going to care about it. Mm -hmm. It's all about the big picture. That's why it's full of mistakes. Okay. I think you know the difference as well. If we watched Sharknado, that would be just miserable. <laughs> no, we laughed. <laughs> we laughed so much. We had such a good time. <laughs> You're completely misremembering. <laughs> we laughed more at this movie, not with, at this movie, yeah. than any movie we ever watched before. That's probably true. Yeah. So, you know, the laughs speaks for themselves. My one sentence is, Samurai Cop would have been better. Mm. Obviously, when you first told me about the film, I thought you said Samurai Cop, and I was envisioning, like, a Sharknado-esque, you know, fish with a gun mm -hmm. or whatever, and that would have been a better film than this one. Yeah, for some reason, in my mind, it looks animated, like Shark Tale. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> for some reason, I can't imagine it, like, realistic. Maybe because it's a fish. I like really can't hold the CGI. samurai. Yeah, I imagine like a samurai fish animation. Coming soon in Pixar animations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's get into the film. The movie starts with a mafia gathering. It starts with this really weird kind of... It just drops so much information on you at the start for no mm. good reason. There's like one gang leader and he's like, yeah, we're gang A and gang B doesn't like us because of this, that and the other. And gang C doesn't like them and we might but we don't like them either and and it's like what none of those things will ever come up again. <laughs> no it doesn't <laughs> and then throughout the whole thing it just keeps cutting to this redhead just yeah. who's just standing there like what's going on <laughs> so what's happening now i don't what, what i have a suspicion that amir Sharvan he likes the ladies <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he's ever seen one before? <laughs> <laughs> Through his lens, for sure. One of the first thing you'll notice in this movie, other than that it's uh, crap, uh, <laughs> that um, there's lots of little intercutting shots of reactions. 
Mm -hmm. Is there reactions to people actually <laughs> react at any point? There is the James Fraser, whatever his name is, Frank Washington, Frank Fraser, Mark Fraser, Mark Fraser, playing he, Frank Washington. Frank, Frank Washington. <laughs> I I got that in there somewhere. <laughs> I can I can cut that together to make it <laughs> a whole name. Frank Fraser. Yeah. <laughs> Playing Frank, Frank Washington. Yeah. It doesn't help that both is Frank. Oh, it's actually not. It's Mark Fraser. Oh, Mark Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very important. We get it right. Um, yeah, especially him. He does faces. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> it's clearly just the director like, putting him against the wall. is like, uh, React. React to what? <laughs> Just react. <laughs> the lady was tossed at the same thing and she was like, I don't know, I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's weird because even though it introduces all these gangs at the same time, randomly cut into this woman, it also has people like, mm -hmm. grunting at each other for no good reason. <laughs> yeah, because they're Japanese. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm saying that was the director's idea i'm not saying that as a racist thing i'm saying he's a racist <laughs> yeah so then one of the rival gangs invades their pool party yeah and the fight breaks out the japanese gang lord gets killed and again it keeps cutting to the redhead and she's just like what <laughs> <laughs> just complete like a statue just yeah stands there. <laughs> just mm. ooh, a bee look <laughs> but butterflies <laughs> It's all about how we get desensitized to violence. <laughs> <laughs> From there, we start a car chase. Yeah. The world's slowest car chase. <laughs> Slow-paced car chase. <laughs> it's just people driving around the city. Yeah, slowly. Grandma speed. And for the longest time on this, I thought Mark Fraser and Caridus were meant to be in different cars. <laughs> yeah. But they're not, because it's so filmed like different times of the day. Yeah, and very different angles in a way where they don't show each other. <laughs> a samurai cop is driving and Frank is giving him instructions, mostly shoot. <laughs> which he from, says from the passenger seat which he says like 100 times but unfortunately one of them wasn't available for filming at the day. <laughs> so it is clearly shot in a way where one of them is not there and they don't actually interact with each other and it's completely different lighting maybe a different car i, I can't yeah, even it tell. looks like a completely different car <laughs> different car the angle that they chose not only breaks the 180 rule, but it breaks the 360 rule <laughs> of filmmaking. I like, it's so awkward. Yeah, this is why it doesn't make sense, because Matt is shown from the side. So we should clearly see the passenger seat. We should... Mm. It's shot Samurai from the passenger seat. Yeah. But it's, but it's not shot from the passenger seat from an eye level perspective. It's shot from the passenger seat as if it's the camera just sitting on the seat. Yes. <laughs> or that's, somewhere in the footwell. Yeah, that's for the partner. And Samurai Cop is shot from outside. Sometimes, yeah. Some it's some, sometimes it's from the back. Yeah. And they've clearly got a guy just wearing his wig. Yeah. <laughs> next to Frank. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's just awful. And sometimes they speed up the footage. Yeah, they speed it, they put it on fast forward to make it <laughs> just missing the lines, the yeah. old fast forward <laughs> lines from F F W D. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a bit where someone gets run over. Yes. But they didn't edit it in any way, shape or form. So you see the car drive up to him, stop, <laughs> pretty much. And then you see a guy like, Oh yeah. I got hit by this car. Yeah. <laughs> it just collapses on the ground like action. Ugh. <laughs> My note here is, no, not the guy from Wet Hot American Summer. <laughs> there was a guy that looked like the kitchen guy from Wet oh, Hot American yeah, Summer. Yeah, yeah. And he was like set up to be this influential character. And mm -hmm. then they killed him. Immediately. <laughs> I think at this point they're trying to stop a blue van that is meeting up with a boat. Yes. To hand over some cocaine. They're meeting up with uh, the infamous cocaine buying company and selling company Joe's <laughs> Rental Joe's Boat Rentals which is written giant pink letters on the boat if only Samurai Cop could have read that and he would know that it was all Joe's Rental Company <laughs> to begin with you have like a secondary film yeah. where Joe's Rental Company is secretly like <laughs> running the whole drug operation <laughs> this is where we get introduced to the love interest Samurai Cop's love interest Jennifer. Yeah. She has some very natural sounding, excellent dialogue <laughs> while she's in the helicopter. 
<laughs> Again, like, has the director ever spoken to human women, do you think? <laughs> or humans at all. <laughs> or watched any movies before, other than Lethal Weapon once. <laughs> so Samurai Cop's doing some driving, and she's like, you're doing well, Samurai Cop, keep it up. And he's like, oh, it's up, you keep it warm. And then she's like, oh, it's warm and red. <laughs> I can't believe he wrote that all down. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write that because it would have immediately been like, scrapped from my brain otherwise I would have immediately tried to forget it mm. ever existed it's just what the fuck <laughs> yeah as you said earlier it's like a Chad GPT <laughs> write a lethal weapon script it's an alien trying to imitate the great screenwriter Shane Black yeah and they drive around the quarry for half an hour yes seems like an unreasonable amount of time and it's not even any action they're literally just driving slowly around corners yeah job done unless they fast forwarded <laughs> and then there's a guy on fire why yeah. is he on fire i think they chase that guy with the drug money or the drugs or whatever and he collides and then the car explodes but we don't see that does he collide with a rock or does he collide or maybe with... a tree something like that <laughs> It collides with bad editing. <laughs> <laughs> he catches on fire and by coincidence, stuntman covered in <laughs> in uh, fire resistant fluid uh, on fire. <laughs> it's a good thing he was wearing that while he was driving the van around. Otherwise he'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh uh, yeah, it's a completely different guy comes out on fire <laughs> and he rolls on the floor and samurai cop and Frank go get their dingy brown fire blanket fire blanket it doesn't didn't look like a fire blanket it just looked like a blanket it would just go on fire use these petrol soaked rags to put him out <laughs> yeah <laughs> they extinguish him and he lifts up his head and looks around for the <laughs> for the director to say cut but it never happens <laughs> yeah so he's dead on the ground and he's like you can clearly see him like looking left and right like yeah, yeah yeah I think one of the main themes in this film is that... There's themes in this <laughs> film. How dare you? How dare you go through all the films I recommend, bad mouthing the themes, and then say this has themes at all? Well, you should let me finish. <laughs> One of the themes in this film is shit. Is the director forgetting to say cut, and <laughs> <laughs> the footage going on for too long? And because film is expensive, he keeps it all in. Naked all ladies. In. Yeah. Yeah. I interrupt you because that's exactly what this film does. It just, all of a sudden they're in the quarry and then boom, there's a naked woman on the screen for no good reason. And it's not even trying. Like the idea of this scene is to show that she's the love interest of Samurai Cop and they're a couple. It's not more than like a flirty banter. It's them actually together. But it's just, it's it's porn. It's just softcore porn. It went on so long and the actors look so clearly uncomfortable with each other. (laughs) That I got that same feeling that you talk about. Uh, You don't like watching sex films. Like I I got, I got really awkward. I'm like, uh, should I do something or should I talk about something or... I don't want to watch this anymore. It's clearly like they picked up two non-professional actors and just do a sex scene. And they look so uncomfortable. (laughs) They like forget how to kiss. Yeah, it's it's so awkward. Yeah, at this point I don't think that I'm convinced the filmmaker's never seen a naked woman before. Because it it doesn't attempt to show intimacy. It literally just is like, but... Yeah. And the camera pans to boobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then back to the bar. Yeah, that's <laughs> one, one point. Yeah, it does that. Yeah. And this scene is very important because, of course, Jennifer is a really important character yeah. that <laughs> won't be forgotten by the movie at all. It's this point in the film where everybody starts calling him Samurai. Yeah. And uh, it didn't come up before. And all of a sudden it's like, Samurai. Because before they were calling him by his name. Yeah. I think in the Mafia gathering they talk about, or they got a samurai to come from San Diego to LA department to deal with the Japanese katana gang. What does katana mean? Japanese sword. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like the most robotic exposition. It's all of it. (laughs) How does that stand out to any other part of the film? I don't know. It's just one of those cult things. They call him samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. Are you Fuji, Fujiyama? 
I don't understand so the mechanics of this story, right? Not that, you know, it needs any scrutiny. But he was set to deal with this Japanese katana gang. Mm -hmm. They brought him over from San Diego to LA. And he already has a mansion, for some reason. Who has a mansion? Beachside mansion, Samurai Cop. Does he? No, he lives in a shitty flat, doesn't he? No. You don't remember when he got out on the beach? Oh, was that his place? I thought that was Jennifer's place. No, because he has sex with the other blonde in there as well. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, okay. I mean, in this, every location in this interchangeable, you know, <laughs> so, you know. It's because it's the same location. <laughs> it's the same grandma's flat. <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two locations, I think, two main locations. I think there's the retired boxer's house. Yeah. And that might be the beach side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the pool. And there's grandma's house. And Grandma's house is the more country, that's where the end takes place, the end shoot out. Right. You missed out the other main location of the, of the film. Yeah. The car park. Oh yeah, the famous car park. <laughs> 17 themes <laughs> filmed in that car park, all meant to be different locations. <laughs> I don't understand how they bring in one guy to deal with the whole gang and what he's supposed to do. Why can't they deal with he's it? He's just a specialist. Because Japanese? I don't know. He needs a specialist for Japanese. Only one of them were Japanese, <laughs> ethnically. My favorite actor who's actually tries in this movie, Robert Zidar. He's the main guy with the jaw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he kind of tries. He's the B-movie legend. He's the biggest get in this movie. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in lots of B-movies. Much better ones than this. Like Maniac Cop. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, he's not Japanese. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't think casting was a, a strong department of this film <laughs> are strong pause <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my favorite things in my notes at this point well they're at the police station and on the desk is supposed to be like pictures of family did you notice the picture in the background no and well, was, i don't remember yeah there was one in the background and i don't know why it is but it's backwards on the desk so it's facing the camera mm -hmm. and it just looks like a casting shot like an actor would send oh, in yeah. like they're real <laughs> <laughs> I do remember this. Yeah. yeah, and when I was writing my notes, I kept putting in, looks like a casting shot, and then next line. And every time I re replaced it for shit, it looks like a casting shot. <laughs> shit. Looks like a casting shot. Shit. And I don't know why my autocorrect, it just must have been reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to hear my next note on the film? Go on. Because I don't remember this very well. <laughs> my next note is, guy in the hall was clearly murdered before. I don't think I meant in the plot. I think the actor they got was so dodgy looking <laughs> that he's clearly murdered someone in real life before. Yeah, they just literally picked people up from the street and gone on being a movie, including the main cast. <laughs> Do you remember why they go see the nurse? They don't see the nurse for the nurse they go to the hospital yes, yes. yeah they I do because they go visit the burn victim they, they go visit the burn who's victim who's not dead yet. yeah he's not dead yet and oh yeah he's got like a body cast pretty much but he's bled over mm -hmm. and they don't change it for some reason it just looks weird like do burn victims bleed that much really doesn't that like actually burn away your like little um i don't know it looked comical it looked like it looked like Looney Tunes, <laughs> as opposed to the rest of the film. It's like well, yeah, really well done. Yeah, so there's the burn victim, and they are protecting him with one guy. Yeah, he stands out the in the one cop on the door. <laughs> one cop on the door who stands out in the doorway, and they go trying to ask him some questions, but he's unconscious. Mm -hmm. And there's this famous nurse scene. This is actually famous. This is how this movie was rediscovered. That there was a clip of this scene where Samurai Cop talks to the nurse on YouTube. And people dug this movie up quite literally from the bins. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what she says? Oh, she's so he's like, are you circumcised? Yes. That Well, that's the end of it. So I wrote this down as well. <laughs> okay. Because dialogue this good needs to be <laughs> memorialized. Please, uh, please put in the exact amount of effort of performance as the actors do. Okay, I need to take it down a few notches <laughs> yeah, from, yeah. from you're, the effort I put into everyday life. <laughs> you're, you're, you're too emotional. <laughs> Would you like to touch what you see? Would you like to fuck me? She touches his dick. Have you been circumcised? Yeah. Yeah, and they says she says the doctor cut too much off. <laughs> oh yeah, it's this whole <laughs> thing about how he's got a tiny <laughs> dick. <laughs> well, first of all, when he touches his dick, we don't even see that. She does. She goes up and like cups him. Yeah, but we can see the shoulders. Like, there's no like insert shot when that happens. So it's 
like a bit confusing of what happened. I don't think it's confusing what happened. So <laughs> it is in a film language kind of way. You know, you need an insert shot, you need to zoom out because you don't actually see what happens. Yeah, so there's this tiny dick joke of that. He's a tiny dick because mm-hmm. she thinks the doctor cut too much off, and he says no, he cut the right amount off. Was he a good doctor? Yeah, he was a good doctor, <laughs> and it just goes on forever. And meanwhile, Frank mugs in the corner <laughs> on a different day, but it's cut, cut, <laughs> cut into this this scene. He makes faces to what he's reacting. Who knows? <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. Ooh. I think like in this as well, the guy's moaning underneath all the. Oh yeah, he goes. Oh. <laughs> 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 it literally goes on for that long. Yeah. Probably longer. Longer, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite little, I don't want to say scenes, because, you know, it's not a scene. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Story beat? Not even that. Thing that happens in this film. <laughs> one of my favorite little things. <laughs> he's just, you can't even give it a credit of story beat. <laughs> it's something that happens. It's, it's a thing that was filmed that happened that people did. <laughs> A samurai cop leaves the building. And they leave the one guy in charge. Leave the one guy in charge. Aloof guy who likes to lean on everything. <laughs> and uh, again, clean in on an actor. Okay, just some guy. And not even microphone, I think, properly. I think he has, like, camera sound. Hardly anyone was microphoned in yeah. this. Much of the film was filmed with no sound at all. Because mm. they couldn't afford the sound equipment. So the director used his own voice in loads of pound production. So that's why the henchmen sound like robots in like some of the scenes. Mark Fraser? Who's Mark Fraser? That's Frank. Yeah, that's why Frank just sounds so bizarre because it's the director just being like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, one of my favourite thing that happens is right after this scene, which is Samurai Cop leaves, leave the aloof cop in there and a redhead yep. from earlier in the film who was not reacting to things rolls in with a little... Bin collection, trolley. Yeah, know? it's more for like old clothes. Yeah, old clothes. It's like the bed sheet trolleys you get in hotels and stuff. Yes, and she sneaks in like that. <laughs> <laughs> Airquotes. <laughs> she goes in there. And then we see uh, the guy bandaged up. And Robert Zadar just gets up from the clothes. And from this she, tiny she basket. Like, she like uncovers him <laughs> and there's a full grown man yes. <laughs> squatting in this car. <laughs> and it's supposed to be like this menacing thing. <laughs> <laughs> and why she could have done it like what yeah I, I mean the only thing i kind of got from it was like the boss sent him to do the job so he has to be the one to kill him he could have dressed up as a janitor then yeah it was just completely pointless to do it with a sword as well yeah and then at first he slits the guy's throat and then awkward cut and his whole head falls off <laughs> one of those katanas they're not really made for like cutting out large chunks of flesh <laughs> they like to slice mm-hmm. you would need to be there for an hour like a sewing motion <laughs> <laughs> cut off a whole head yeah it's not like perforate it's not like no. got ridges on it like yeah. a saw yeah it's like uh, trying to cut a slice of bread with a butter knife you know it's like <laughs> it's not for that <laughs> so yeah they escape and what I really didn't understand and this happens throughout the entire film as they're running away is why they keep editing in heel noises what noises? Heel noises. Like the woman running away. And oh, like, t- 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 uh-huh. Like it's all the time. Whenever she's in the scene and, and I, you know, but it's the only bit of sound there is. Mm-hmm. You hear this like kind of like wind, like. <laughs> Could be a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it literally does. It sounds like Monty Python with the coconuts. <laughs> and I love how they're like, call for security. And there's one guy. Yeah, there's one <laughs> There's one guy and he's slowly, lazily looking around. <laughs> runs up and down a single hallway. Runs down a hallway and then clearly they like flip it because they only have the hallway to film in. So they then film it from the other end of the hallway <laughs> and he runs down that. Yeah. <laughs> My next note is, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. Is this about the awkward cut? When he forgot to say cut. Oh, like, they, yeah. <laughs> this is in the hospital just before. Just before they they come in because the redhead walks past. And then, yeah, the cop actor 
goes and talks to the receptionist. They have like a, a minute long conversation <laughs> while it's <laughs> Fair Islands. Which is weird because when I looked it up, it said because they didn't have enough film reel. Yeah. They were trying to save on the film reel. That's why it seems just end so abruptly mm-hmm. because they were like, scenes don't end. Mm-hmm. But there were so many times where that's not the case either. <laughs> well, that's the other effect of that film saving. Probably didn't have enough film to finish a whole feature length film. So they just had to keep all this uh, awkward extra bits in where they, we forgot to say cut, the actors just kind of awkward and they kind of try to stay in character, but they just don't know what to do with themselves. So they're like, stand around, look around. <laughs> my favorite is the police chief. <laughs> my other favorite thing that happens in the movie, police chief, typical 80s, yeah. 90s police chief. I, I'll have your badge and your... You gotta play it by the book. If you don't play it by the book, I'll have your ass. I'll throw the book up your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a golf club, I'll shove that up your ass as well. Yeah. Now just imagine that scene, but when it ends, you keep rolling the camera and you didn't say cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened in this film. He shouts at them, they go out, he keeps pointing, and he just doesn't <laughs> stop pointing. And he's just waiting for the cut to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then he realizes the cut and it's not going to happen. So he leans back in his chair and he just falls asleep. Like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Frank comes in, kisses him on the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a blooper that's left in the film, basically. <laughs> that's just a little fun thing to do. He kisses him on the forehead and he shouts at him again. He, he leans back again and then he falls asleep again and then he laughs. laughs. And that's the scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful from oh my god so they're trying to find <laughs> they're trying to find the bad guys so they go to this restaurant where the uh, bad guys are yeah this well, they, go to, they go to several different restaurants they like filming in a panda express somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the director imagined this cd underground cool, <laughs> like bar it like strip these dancers and like fog and darkness yeah it's just uh the olive garden <laughs> <laughs> it's Nando's. <laughs> you get the feeling, like, just out of shot, there's, like, a kid's birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. This is where he meets Peggy Lee, the restaurant owner. Is Peggy Lee the restaurant owner? That That's a name. That, that's a name that exists in this movie. What, wait, is that the actress's name? I just call her Blonde, too, <laughs> because that's all she deserves, to be fair. We're not allowed to do that, so... Is listening to this got really annoyed at us for our Mulholland Drive, uh, where we kept calling them blonde and brunette. But this movie is justified <laughs> <laughs> because she has no name. She does have a name. It's Peggy Lee. But we forget the male's names as well. Yeah, I know. We meet Peggy Lee, the restaurant owner. Uh, they, they have a s- say her name. Yeah. Okay. Probably. <laughs> Probably. In the credits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we meet blonde too. Um. (laughs) (laughs) I'll keep saying what I want god damn it because she is no character she's just another blonde lady samurai cup to fondle yeah this is where they're all sitting around the table and next to the window and he's threatening the drug lord and he's like you're killing our children for drug money and then immediately he turns around to the woman and like hey girl <laughs> how you doing you seem like a nice all-american girl oh yeah this is the f- famous monologue scene where samurai cop gives a monologue about the mafia killing children i'm telling you motherfuckers that uh you killing children is bad hey lady <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he pissed off the drug lord so much the drug lord sends his henchmen out into the car park to follow them <laughs> And they have an epic shootout. <laughs> Fun fact, they couldn't afford that many prop guns. Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice it at the time, but I've read since that they all have the same guns. <laughs> because they'd shoot one scene with mm-hmm. a prop gun, and then they didn't have enough guns to give someone else one. So they then took the gun <laughs> off that guy, gave it to the second, and was like, shoot back at him. <laughs> And that's why there's so many scenes in this film where you don't see people shooting at each other. It's one person shooting, cut, next person shooting, cut, next mm. person shooting. Yeah. <laughs> and like this <laughs> and they're they're trying to simulate gunfight, but they're clearly just like there's someone just outside of frame shooting small fireworks <laughs> into the shot. Or um sparklers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throwing them in. Yeah, it did feel like that sometimes. Now you have 
when he goes to see the lady. She is the restaurant slash girlfriend of the Japanese boss. Uh, so I vaguely remember. So her dad had died early in her life, and the restaurant was going under. So the drug lord bought the restaurant and kept them all employed, and I guess gives them the profits or something. I okay. And so this lady feels like she's in the influence of this Japanese mafia, and so Samurai Cop senses this with his Samurai Cop senses <laughs> of uh, ladies in trouble and in an impossible situation, and he comes out of the toilet, <laughs> 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 which is the front door. <laughs> so you didn't believe me when we first watched it. I know it's the first time. So it's supposed to be the entrance to the room, but. As they try and walk through and kind of block where they're coming from at the same time, but you can clearly see behind them there's like tiles <laughs> and, and like a fucking bath. It's kind of uh, coming out of the bathroom. And this is supposed to be the entrance to the thing, like knock, knock. <laughs> I'm coming in now. Yeah. So Samurai Cop hides in her hides in her bathroom. bathroom. <laughs> to be honest, what follows doesn't feel out of line for Samurai Cop for what follows. <laughs> yeah, and he comes out and he says, let me kidnap you. <laughs> <laughs> he says let's talk in my car but somehow they end up in his place she's like no I don't want to go with you and he's like come on girl and, yeah. he, and she's like no <laughs> like because he's like oh free on Friday no <laughs> are you free on Saturday no are you free on Sunday no I've got church have a Monday <laughs> <laughs> I think he's having a fight with a baseball bat at this point. Oh no, it's, um, yes, some of the gang members come into the restaurant. And my favourite bit of that is one of the interchangeable extras that are fighting in this movie. The main one, <laughs> that leads the group. <laughs> he comes in with a baseball bat, he swings the baseball bat around oh, yeah, like that. he never did that before. <laughs> He's just trying it out for the first time when he feels like to hit all the baseball bat. Yeah, he's like swinging it around like a sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he almost drops it. It was really awkward. <laughs> this is the power of editing in this film where he finishes the fight and then he throws the baseball bat away and it cuts to him going back to the woman. And he's still got the baseball bat. He's got the his back in his hand and he throws it away again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same car park. It's the same yeah. car park they had the fight in before. They're all standing in the car park again. And, like, one by one, she kind of offers to fuck all of them. <laughs> they're all having, like, this really group conversation. It's another thing where they're, like, witty dialogue that's not witty. <laughs> she's talking to Frank. Frank's like, oh, yeah, you should come over to my place tomorrow. And she's like, oh, I'd love to later tonight after dark. And then the old guy? What's the old guy's name? The, the guy who... Oh, the bush. Yeah, the guy hiding in the bush is like... I don't know, I know oh, I thought you were coming over my place. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's next week. And then she, like, offers to fuck Samurai Cop at the same time. It's not meant to be, like, flirty, that's not going to happen. It's like, yeah, she's going to fuck all these guys for no reason. I don't know if I put the amount of effort into my notes that this film put into itself. I'm surprised you kept up because there's so many things going on because, in this film. Because my, ne my next one is... <laughs> he promised to buy me Japanese pearls and then I've put pearl necklace <laughs> I don't know why I have no idea what that relates that's to ju that's just your mind <laughs> it's smash cuts to smash cuts. Na naked lady again yeah I would call it raw cuts which is no fault whatsoever <laughs> it's just the footage ended so yeah. it goes to the next scene drug lords come after Jenny Lee Gen Jenny, Jenny Lee? Lee oh my god Peggy Lee can we just call it Blonde 2, her real name? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we will get these right. Um, yeah, so Peggy Lee has just slept with Samurai Cop. Yeah. That's some of my favourite scenes in the movie. Like the montage of them falling in love. <laughs> 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 he wants to see Peggy on the Friday. He wants to see Peggy on the Saturday. No, no. He wants to see Peggy on the Sunday church. Ah. There's an opening. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so he stalks her he stalks in church. Her. He stalks her in church and kidnaps her because he says, <laughs> let's talk in my car, and they end up in his house. <laughs> so she's kidnapped by our hero, Samurai Cup. And then I think we're able to assume that they just fallen in love. Yeah. But there follows this weird montage. The way it's cut, it looks like it's been filmed in years, in different years. <laughs> yeah, <whatsoever>. it, yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think they haven't even had sex yet, but he comes out with the little cake. Happy birthday. To... And this was like two minutes after she was kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, it does like a whole thing. Like they take like a long stroll on the beach. Yeah. And then... <laughs> this was all happening in the day. Her birthday at the <laughs> beach and her kidnapping. It's edited like it's five or six years have passed and it's actually like three hours. Yeah. I think I broke Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So Best movie ever. The big the big guy comes into the house. That Robert's door. Yeah. And then they have a fight with a bald guy in the car park again. Oh. At she's a famous B guy as well. B okay. movie guy. Gerald Okamura. Gerald Okamura, yeah. He's a martial arts kind of guy for film. Instructor slash fight choreographer slash sometimes actor when he needs to be. <laughs> One fun thing in this movie. This is where Samurai Cop is supposed to show off all this samurai stuff. Right. Uh, samurai training, which was uh, approximately 15 minutes before they said action. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit of this is there's a chase scene where Samurai Cop is chasing after the bald guy. They run down the hill and then it cuts again. They run down a hill and they cuts again. They run down a hill. And it cuts again, and they're on the top of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit is Gerald Okamura. He tries to shoot Samurai Cop. He runs out of bullets, and he runs away. And he runs away in this, like, weird cacti-filled location <laughs> that when Samurai Cop shows up, suddenly turns into a completely different climate with completely different <laughs> <laughs> flora and fauna. <laughs> <laughs> And my favorite thing is, of course, the samurai fight, which is Samurai Cops gives him a wedgie or something. He, he does these all these uh, high school tactics, which is doing this. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you describe this? Cause I can't. It's like the got your nose. Oh, got thing. your nose thing. Oh, yeah. He, he does it one finger below, actually. Okay. So that would break your thumb. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he punches him with that. He does the rock symbols you know how like in karate movies it's like open palm and people like get ready and then get into position he does that with the rocker symbol <laughs> the wig makes a return oh my god the wig the, the, it's hell. the wig's best scene best scene of the wig which is it genuinely falls off <laughs> it, it's falls like it off. falls off his head falls off they're having a fight and they he pulls his him, wig off put him back and then they, they keep going yeah they just don't end that at all it's a magical moment that's the point I felt where, like, no one cares anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody gives a shit about this film. Naked ladies. Yeah. Another, would you call it a drop cut? A raw cut. Shit cut. A shit cut. Yeah. Now it's the master henchman and the redhead. Oh, yeah. Because, again, no rhyme or reason. Wasn't mentioned before that they were an item. Wasn't necessary for the plot whatsoever. No. But, yeah, again, it's just the director... Got a naked lady and it's boobs. Yeah. But. <laughs> boobs. But. <laughs> now you gotta have, you know, equality. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I think this is where I noticed that this film is very shoddily made and like different sections of a scene is filmed in different days, different climates, different locations, different actors, you know, like whatever goes, except in these scenes where it's like competently shot, mm -hmm. pretty lighting. Even lighting. They got lighting somehow. Yeah. No film reel was spared for these <laughs> scenes. You know, we give this movie a lot of slack in terms of sexism. But I do think he may have a thing for male, male people as well. Men's. Yeah. Because every fight scene that starts looks like a gay porno is about to break out. <laughs> Soft porn, porn music. And then... It's usually the big boss guy, Robert Zadar, like standing, yep. like stoically. And like buff guys keep coming out. One, two, and they just keep running out. Just run, stop, and just look. And they just keep coming out, keep coming out. And then there was a few uncomfortable shots of the samurai cop's groin and gooch and <laughs> all his bits <laughs> as well. Not as much as the ladies, but, you know, the man gets some love too. <laughs> no. There's so much more of this film. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Page 38. The bad guys break into the, what I thought was the captain's house. Yeah. Because the captain and the old police officer are fairly interchangeable. 
Yeah, they look like they have like 20 years in between them, but otherwise they look pretty much identical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought they'd broke into the captain's house, but they didn't. They broke into the old partner's house because they're looking for Samurai Cop. Yes. And it's just another excuse for more boobs because they like tear the lady's dress off. They don't exactly tear it off. It's already loose on her and then they shake her around and it gets loose Mm -hmm. and then cut and it's back up again. Yeah. So I think she was like, nope. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I hope so. And it was kept in. Yeah. And then they go to Jennifer's house. And then a small torture porn scene starts up where they pin her down. Oh, yeah. And they pour hot oil on her. They... And it's very unclear where they're pouring that oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was supposed to be a stomach or something. It is, yeah. But because they don't show it because it doesn't steam up or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, it just looks and it's like just water. a bit further south than it should be. And kind of proves the point, like, she's surplus to the film at this point. Oh, yeah. Like, she was the love interest at the start <laughs> of the film. And then, oh, so fuck, something's happening with her. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, Samurai Cop basically said fuck her anyway. Like, she's the first girlfriend. And then there's no hesitation to get a second one. Or flirt very, very hard with the nurse, you know. Yeah, I think even in like early scenes, the idea is they're together, but he's samurai cop sitting with Frank, and he's like, "Oh my god, I slept with this amazing girl last yeah. night, or like a few weeks ago," and she's like, "Oh, bless him, oh no, be angry." <laughs> no, this is how humans act in the real world. There's another sex scene. Yeah, I don't even remember this one. Well, there's there's one with the uh, blonde too. Bum to bum. That's what I've written. Bum to bum. Bum to bum, more boobs. <laughs> Porn music. Excruciatingly long. <laughs> yeah. Sex scene. <laughs> yeah, it is. I got what you get. I got the sweats. Like, I, <laughs> I started to feel awkward. Yeah. I don't even know who's in this one. Uh, the blonde too. Blonde too. Blonde two and Samurai Cop. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because you after know, their five years of marriage. After, after their five years of marriage and <laughs> birthdays and <laughs> anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> they finally, you know, maybe they were like celibate before that. He's, <laughs> they just, um, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> what was that motion? <laughs> Dan, so for those who, who can't see that, Dan just did this weird fisting motion. <laughs> That's sign language for consummate. <laughs> However, you get down. <laughs> So now they're in another house. I think at this point they're in Samurai Cop's house because there's gym equipment everywhere. Yeah, there's the boxer's. The boxer's house. The retired boxer's house. Yeah. In By the way, life. The, yeah. I was about to say, retire, <laughs> there's no retired boxer in this film. It's no. just they've clearly, that's whose house they've rented. Yeah, because you can see on the wall there's like old boxing pictures and like belts. Okay. Yeah, and they haven't yeah. taken any of that down. No. The film. Why, why would you? It's not distracting at all. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we didn't mention, when they see the burn victim, okay, they keep coming in and out of the room that he's in, and right next to his burn victim room is, was it dental oh, office? Oh, dentist office. <laughs> Den- <laughs> dentist office. It's like a hospital, but the third degree burn unit is right next to the dentist office, as it usually is, right? <laughs> There's just all these like little signs, Joe's <laughs> rental company <laughs> and dental office, they're my favorite things. For some reason now they climb over a fence. A samurai cop climbs over a fence and Frank slides under the fence. Yeah, because he's an undercover cop. <laughs> oh my god. That's what he says, by the way. I didn't yeah. come up with that. Just, I don't want the credit. And they mug at the camera for <laughs> half a minute. It, it is just missing a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like these little scenes better where they clearly just fucking around and they uh, just like, yeah, whatever. Director's not gonna say anything. By the way, Frank, that actor, holds the record for looking at the camera the most amount of times <laughs> by accident <laughs> or on purpose. I don't know. He's like sometimes it's just a completely unrelated scene and just walks out, just looks at the camera and this does a <laughs> wink or something. <laughs> I think clearly he thought it was gonna be cut before that, but right. you never know with the Mercer Evan. So now it's the final big fight. Oh yeah. And they fight amongst the trees. Yeah, there's one bit where there's a fat guy who's uh, keeps <laughs> who's in behind the tree. He pokes out, but he keeps running to even smaller trees. 
remember that? And it's just like, it's almost like comic perfection. <laughs> it just keeps running to smaller and smaller trees. And this is where we find out that this is a superhero film. A superhero film? Yeah, and Samurai Cop, real power is the space-time distortion. <laughs> <laughs> it can be anywhere, anytime yeah. <laughs> he wants to be. <laughs> Because yeah, he's in a field, <laughs> then he's in a house, then he's outside the house, <laughs> then he's on the roof, and then he's in the field again. Yeah. <laughs> My other favourite bit is just leading up to this fight scene is they walk up to the house, to Grandma's country house, and there's just a guy with a sword just hanging yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Because they need a sword later. Yeah. Set up, pay off. This is where the redhead dies. Oh no. Yep. I was really emotionally invested in that character and I was sad to see her go. <laughs> so he picks the sword off the floor and they're about to start this sword fight with big henchmen. And they start by walking really far away from each other. <laughs> like they're about to do pistols. Yeah. But they don't do pistols. They just kind of, they walk really far away from each other, draw swords, and then walk slowly back towards each other. Well, it's meant to be like a tension building scene, but instead it just looks silly. And this is where he actually first starts the special punch thing. Oh, this is where he starts yeah, the... Yeah, he's like, got your nose. <laughs> got your nose. <laughs> so, Samurai Cop wins. So, Samurai Cop doesn't want to kill main henchman, even though he killed pretty much everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's no... Like, I don't get it, but whatever. And then, what's this real awkward bit where... Main henchman stabs himself. Stabs himself. And he immediately dies, even though he stabbed himself in the stomach. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like that. Hooray. Hooray. And then, well, the last scene is we cut back to the same scene as before of Samurai Cop being on a beach with... Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, what's her face? A uh, blonde too. <laughs> oh, no. Peggy Lee. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Back to the scene, same scene as before of Samurai Cop on a beach with Peggy Lee. Yeah. And the uh, happy ending? Question mark? <laughs> I guess so. Not for anyone else apart from Samurai Cop yeah. and Frank. What an amazing experience. Oh, God. <laughs> so, what is your score out of 10? <laughs> two. Wow, two? Yeah. Okay, I thought you were going to say minus 500 or something. I was going to, yeah. As out, of, out of 10 stars, I give it the shit emoji. Okay. This is the famous one from Popstar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we did laugh a lot. We did laugh a lot. It's... These films are funny to laugh at, but it's never, ever something I would volunteer to watch. It, for me, is just a waste of time. Well, alone, it's not fun to watch. It's together, no. it's fun to watch. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Alone, it would be miserable. <laughs> but when you're there and, you know, as I said to you before we watched it, it's like, it's a talk of a movie. It's glad there's sex scenes in there because we can, you know, chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a movie where you vocally make fun of it. And ask what fifty times. <laughs> so you enjoyed it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You enjoyed the experience? No. You laughed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> all of those things. So many emotions. I can't even <laughs> begin to put them all together. Okay. I love it. It's one of my favorite bad indie films, bad B movies. It's a classic. <laughs> it is in, in terms of bad B movie. It's the room. This and what's it called? Troll Two. It's called but the best worst movies ever made. Talk a little bit about the sequel. Okay, the sequel is a clear cash grab, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. It's just bad, bad, bad. Like not even funny bad, just bad. Yeah, basically, some guy had the rights, I don't know fucking how, there's paperwork of this anywhere existing. And they started to talk about a movie with Mark Fraser because they thought the main guy was dead. They okay. thought, they thought uh, Matthew Carradas is dead. So they started to talk about a movie and he turned up shirtless in a video talking about, He's, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ranting. It's kind of a weirdo. Tommy Wiseau is in it. Yeah. So that can tell you what kind of movie <laughs> it is. It's like banking on this. Oh, isn't it funny? <laughs> and then make a lot of callbacks and stuff, but it's just not. I watched the trailer. Yeah. Is it like set in the future or something? It seems much better made in terms well, of production it is, value. It is better made, technically. Mm. But it's not fun. Okay. It's just miserable. 
I just skimmed through it. I watched like 20 minutes of it and I don't know. No. It's a hard thing to do a sequel for this movie. The best case scenario would be to find the original filmmaker and give him lots of money. <laughs> but he, he passed away, so. Mm. So, it is that time of the night. Of the day. <laughs> what is your next movie, good sir? So, I have tortured you quite a lot recently. We watched Little Nicky. Yeah. Um, we watched The A-Team. We watched Atomic Blonde, which wasn't that bad, but you didn't, you know, wasn't one of your favourite films. No. And I'm inspired by the animation you chose, Paprika. Okay. So I'm also going to choose an animation that we've spoken of before, and we're going to watch The Breadwinner. Yeah. What was this again? It is about... Basically, a girl's father gets ill, and she has to... Because in her culture, women aren't allowed to earn money. She has to pretend to be a boy to earn money for mm -hmm. her family. Cool. Thank you for suffering with us. Yes, I hope you suffered as much as I had to <laughs> while watching this film. I recommend Samurai Cop. I don't recommend Samurai Cop. I recommend anything else <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Go rent yourself a copy of The Meg. <laughs> the Smeg. The Smeg returns. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in. <laughs>